Hello. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Leon Bosch, and I'm a South African-born double bass player. Although I've lived in the United Kingdom since 1982, so that's 38 years in the United Kingdom, and traveling the world with my double bass. But I want to talk to you today about my project, the South African double bass. It is in two parts. The first part is about the music, and the second part is about my idea of a unique South African school of double bass playing. But let's start with the music. I realized about five years ago that I had spent so much time traveling the world playing recitals and concerto performances of standard repertoire. Bortosini, Kusivitsky, Jorgenetti, Pedro Valls, Josep Severo, and a huge amount of contemporary music also. But I had never played any South African music for double bass. And I soon realized that part of the reason for that was because there was no music by South African composers. It was a rumour that Stefan Scherfi had written something, but I never found the piece. And I realised then that I have to start from scratch to commission music for the double bass by South African composers. And I started with Paul Hamner, the South African jazz legend. We'd been at university together, and he's one of my lifelong friends. He wrote for me a piece called Scratch Bad and Six for Double Bass and Piano, and I premiered that in London in 2016. And that piece was soon followed by a meditation for double bass by Anton Peterson, who had also been a fellow student in Cape Town at the university. And then I got a piece called The Vaihu Tea Party from Michael Blake. And Grant McLachlan, who many of you will know as a famous television and film composer, wrote a sonatina, a beautiful sonatina. I then went to the United States to play this recital entitled The South African Double Bass. And that was the first time that I'd ever played a recital devoted entirely to South African music. And the idea resonated with so many people. In fact, the South African newspaper, De Burger, wrote an article about it. And I was very encouraged by this. And I began to play this recital everywhere. I played it at the African Concert Series in London. And then I began to get a lot of more new music. Many composers were offering to write for me, and I also asked many others to write. One of the beautiful pieces I got shortly after my American trip was from Peter Klatzer, his Sipu. A gift, a beautiful piece for double bass and piano. Now, that piece has been recorded also, and I'm delighted to tell you that here is the first ever recording of music for double bass by South African composers, and the disc is called simply the South African double bass. There are nine pieces on this disc, and many of them are not just on the disc; they've also broadcast them, and that leads me to this question. The South African Up Bass project in respect to the music is not just about commissioning new music, but it's also about performing it in public, and it's also about broadcasting it. So whenever I have the opportunity when I appear on radio to broadcast music, I choose music by South African composers wherever I can. The idea also is that for future generations there will be this reservoir of music to play. And I would like to invite every South African bass player to include at least one piece of South African music every time you play a recital, or if you play an audition. If you have a choice, use a piece of South African music. It furthers the cause of South African composers. They have to be our friends. We have to be their champions. And also, don't limit yourself just to commissioning pieces for double bass as a solo instrument or with piano. I have a number of concertos that have been written to me also. Of course, you will know that Alan Stevenson wrote the burlesque for double bass and a concerto for me in 2005, and that has been recorded again on the Meridian Records label. But I also performed last year a new concerto called Red Ink by Shane Woodbourne, a South African composer who lives in Salzburg. David Earl, who was also represented on this disc with South African double bass, wrote a concerto for me, but that concerto awaits its world premiere. I'm also in the process of trying to commission a concerto called just the African Concerto from Bongamani Dodana Breen. I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm sure that this process will continue. Every time I complete one project, it just gives birth to another commissioning project. And I would like all of you to contribute to this project, not just to play music, but you have friends who are composers. Ask them to write for you. Ask them to contribute to this project so that the future will be a very rich one for South African bass players. The other important thing I began to realize was that 
how does one make this music available? If one relied upon the traditional publishers, they wouldn't publish because their criteria for publishing things is whether they get to make money. And I think the double bass is seen very much as a minority interest. So I started my own publishing company. It's called A Music Country Publications. A Music Country Publications is devoted to music that includes the double bass. And so far, I've published a number of transcriptions of pieces that I used to play as encores in recitals. It's also my plan to publish every single piece that is written for me by South African composers and also by composers here. But I'd like to have this music available for everybody. So if you think that you know of a good piece of South African music composed for double bass that should be published, let me know. If you want help from me in commissioning new music or talking to me about composers that you think I should commission, I'd love you to talk to me also about that. This project, the South African double bass, is not just my personal project. It is something for all of us, bass players and composers, and for music itself. This, I'm intending to record a second disc very soon of South African music, and this one will be very different from the first one, which is just music for bass and piano, nine pieces. The second disc will include a quartet for double basses by Stanley Glasser, who was a South African composer who lived in London. He was head of music at one of the universities, and I only discovered this piece recently. It's beautiful. It's called Work Gang. Also, Michael Hankinson, who lives in the United Kingdom now, but a musician who spent his life in South Africa, has composed a duo for cello and double bass, a set of variations on Nkosi Sikilel. It's beautiful. And I also want to play a piece on this disc by Matthijs van Dijk, a brilliant young South African composer. It's called Five Perspectives of a Moment, and it's written for double bass, piano, and FX pedals. And this will be the first time that I record solo double bass with electronics. It's going to be a beautiful challenge, and I'm delighted that I will have this opportunity. But I'm also keen that more composers should write. If you think there are composers that should write, put them in touch with me, and I will ask them to write, and we will see what we need to do to make it possible. Also, I'd like to invite you to put all your energy into this project to further the cause of South African music for double bass. South Africa has some brilliant comp composers. All they need is a champion, and if you can be that person, that be the best contribution to, you make, not just to the instrument, but to music itself. There are so many more bass players now than when I studied the double bass at the University of Cape Town in the late 1970s and the beginning of the 80s. And it's encouraging to see how many of these bass players that I've encountered in the last 20 years as a coach and as a teacher and in master class have flourished. And I'd invite all of you to further this project with me. In the next part of my uh, presentation here, I want to talk about the South African School of Bass Playing. And that again involves a whole generation of young bass players who followed in my footsteps. The South African School of Double Bass Playing. When I started learning the bass, I learned with Zoltan Kovacs. And Zoltan Kovacs, of course, was a perfect expression of the Hungarian school of bass playing. He learned with Lars Montag, who, as you will know, wrote a method for the bass in many volumes and also compiled a lot of Hungarian music for double bass. So there are schools of music of double bass playing. There's the German school, there's the Italian school, which comes from Bottasini, and there are all sorts of other schools of bass playing, but there is no South African school of bass playing. And there has to be one. And the reason there has to be one is this. When I started learning the bass, there were very few South African bass players. In fact, in the orchestra in Cape Town, all the bass players were foreign. There was Zoltan Kovacs' as principal, there's Charles Roberts, there's Klaus Tail, there was Max Runge, there was Marino Tricarico, Brian Key, all musicians from abroad. And there were precious few students at university. When I was in the University of Cape Town, there was only one other bass student. But I realized that I'd already begun to develop my concept of bass playing a uniquely South African concept. And when I, took, uh, I, when I began to interact with students as teacher and professor, in fact, I'm professor at the Trinity Laban Conservatory of Music, and also I coach various orchestras around the world, I realized that I developed a unique understanding of sound and that that was expressed in a particular way. Very difficult to describe what I mean, but could I give you this example? 
if you were to listen to the music of Abdullah Ibrahim, listen to Mannenberg, the first time you hear the saxophone playing, you know that the person playing the saxophone could not possibly have grown up anywhere in the world except in South Africa, in Cape Town, and possibly in Mannenberg itself. The sound expresses something painful and also something glorious about South Africa. So I realized that I had begun already to develop this idea of what the bass should sound like and what I'd like to hear and why the bass is important. So how does this South African school of bass playing express itself? It expresses itself through a unique an identifiable, uniquely identifiable sound. And then also it is based in a intellectual concept which is coherent and also there's an aesthetic aspiration and a philosophical concept. It is not possible just to play an instrument in a purely mechanical manner but it has to be underpinned by these basic fundamentals. And all those fundamentals, intellectual, philosophical and aesthetic, are expressed through the sound. I started teaching over 30 years ago. And I began to discover what it is that works in the bass and what is the best method for imparting this to other human beings. And you will all know that teaching by example is the most effective means. Just the other day, I was giving an orchestral masterclass at Trinity. And they were playing Beethoven V. And I was talking about the articulation in the scherzo, the dotted minims, and they just couldn't do it. And I picked up the bass from one of the students and I played, just four bars. And I handed the bass back to the student and they all began to play and they played it perfectly. They played exactly how I imagine I'd love to hear it in an orchestra. Now curiously you will know that I've been teaching in South Africa also very regularly for a long time. I first began to return to South Africa in the mid-90s, 1990s. And I began to coach bass players in the Miyagi Orchestra and also the South, South African National Youth Orchestra. I gave master classes at various universities. And I encountered a generation of young players. And I'm delighted to know that so many of you have been so successful. There are great South African bass players all around the world. Think of Portugal, in the Gulbenkian Orchestra. Think of the United States. Think of the great jazz bass players in South Africa, Viwi and Tim Nkosa. They both were musicians from the Miyagi Project. And I have to say that the person that has most effectively internalized my concept of music and concept of bass playing is the young bass player, Ruan Bartman who came to study in the United Kingdom and also went to Manion School in the Royal Academy and also came to learn with me at Trinity. And what is very special about the way that Ruan has in internalized this concept it is that it's also found a very personal expression of all the fundamentals of this uniquely South African school of bass playing. I have a particular method which I use to teach and it's expressed through what I call my accelerated learning algorithm an algorithm for music. It's a very, very clearly defined means of learning. It has four major steps. It's foolproof. It works a treat every time. And the important thing that we have to do as South Africans is to write the method. I haven't had time until now to write the South African method, the equivalent of Simandl, but that's going to happen. I haven't had time yet to write the book the accelerated learning algorithm, but that's going to happen. But you all have a responsibility in this also. When you play the bass, don't just play it as an instrument. Think about these fundamentals. Think about how the sound that you make expresses your personal view of the world, how it expresses your own personal history in South Africa, your journey around the globe, your understanding of music. When you teach anybody, make sure that they internalize these concepts. The concept of instrumental virtuosity, it's about expressing with ease anything that you feel in your heart. We all have a responsibility in this, and I'd love to talk to you more, and I'd like you to engage with me, write to me, ask me questions about how we can further this project. 
And the single biggest ambition that I have for South African based babies is we have to one day host an international convention of bass players in South Africa, preferably in Cape Town because that's my hometown, in the same way that the International Society of Bases has this convention every two years. There is a Facebook South African Bass Society, which I wish you would all subscribe to, but let's start a South African Dumb Bass Society and let's have this major ambition to host an international convention where all of us will participate, we'll play standard repertoire, we'll play new music, we'll play South African composers, and we will further the cause of the South African dumb base. Thank you. Mm -hmm.